Rhode Island historian Dr. Patrick Conley, thank you for joining us here Kate, in studio. Great to be here. We have the pleasure of often publishing a lot of your works on GoLocalProv.com, but wanted you in because it's kind of a big week here in Rhode Island, May 29th, Rhode Island's Statehood Day. Became the 13th and last of the original colonies to ratify the Constitution, and the Heritage Harbor Foundation is making a big celebration of this. Yes, we hope to make it a uh, an annual event. The uh, Heritage Harbor Foundation is a four million dollar foundation that uh, where the money was salvaged from the Heritage Harbor Museum, that uh, a project that uh, failed, but we were able to uh, transfer a lot of the assets of the museum uh, to the developers of the Rhode Island uh, School of Nursing, and uh, we're using that money for heritage-oriented projects, and one of those projects uh, will be the recognition of uh, Rhode Island's ratification of the Constitution. That's Statehood Day, it's May 29th, and really that ratification brought the Union together and ended the revolutionary era, uh, not only for the state, but for the country. And you talked about, again, the book ending of Rhode Island's role in this from both the burning of the Gatsby to being that bookend of that 13th state. I mean, kind of Rhode Island was there at the, quote, beginning, and then was that, that final uh, check in the box there. Yes, I, I did an essay once called First in War, Last in Peace, and that kind of uh, describes the situation. The burning of the Gatsby in June of 1772 was the first major overt military act leading up to the outbreak of the War for Independence and Rhode Island's ratification of the Constitution as the 13th state brought an end to the Revolutionary Era. So it's very appropriate that we have this uh, celebration of Statehood Day in conjunction with uh, the Patuxent Rangers and also the Gatsby Days Committee. Because as you mentioned appropriately, that it, it, those events uh, bookend one another and uh, I'd like to embed uh, Statehood Day into the Gatsby Day celebration. Fantastic. Again, so this big first celebration, what, can, what are we expecting on the 29th? <clears throat> well, there's not bells and whistles, but there, there will be, a, uh, you might say, a more cerebral approach. Uh, they, uh, Dr. John uh, Cannon, past president of Gatsby Days, will talk about the Gatsby incident kicking off uh, uh, this uh, book-ended celebration. And then Colonel Ron Bonds, who's the commander of the Patuxent Rangers, will talk about the Rangers. They got revived in, uh, during the bicentennial when I was chairman of RI 76 mm. uh, back in the mid-70s, and they've been very active ever since. He'll talk about the Rangers and some of the military highlights of the revolution. And then I'll wind it up uh, with brief remarks on Rodan's ratification and the reason why we delayed uh, ratification. The whole thing will take about an hour and we've got uh, flags and copies of the U.S. Constitution and also a, a free booklet on Rhode Island and the Constitution that will be distributed to attendees and then there will be refreshments uh, served as well. Okay, sounds like it's going to be a fun celebration. We'll provide all the links to that. You expect some history buffs to turn out? I hope so. Uh, where This is the inaugural. Uh, maybe when this becomes a uh, a hallowed uh, and traditional event, uh, there'll be more people, but uh, I certainly think that uh, we'll have anywhere from 100 to uh, 200 people at the initial ceremony, particularly with Go Local and, and uh, individuals uh, like yourself uh, helping to promote it. Getting the word out. And speaking of promotion, if you're not celebrating Rhode Island Statehood Day, you're usually found writing. What's, what's the next book on tap from uh, Dr. Conley? Well, uh, I'm the president also of the Rhode Island Heritage Hall of Fame, and I've done two books uh, on our earlier inductees. One is called Rhode Island's Founders that covers from settlement to statehood to 1790. The next volume was called Makers of Modern Rhode Island, and it covered from 1790 to 1860. I have a book that's right in press now, uh, that is called Rhode Island's Golden Age and Those Who Gave It Glitter. And it covers the period from 1861 to 1900. And right in the middle of that period, the reason why I called it the Golden Age, the federal census of 1880 showed that Rhode Island led the entire nation in the assessed valuation of its real and personal property. We were number one. 
We were number one. Wow. Yeah, I think we've <laughs> gone very sharply in the other direction, unfortunately. So uh, hopefully we can at least celebrate our golden age. Uh, let's put it this way. We used to be a contender. <laughs> So what was that, that, that period of time, 1860 to 1900? 1861 to, to 1900. So how many more books are on tap after this? Well, I've done 30, uh, and uh, I'm 80 years old in the bloom of my senility, so uh, I don't know how many more, how many more I have uh, uh, in, in the well. <laughs> Well, a great celebration on May 29th. Again, the celebration of Rhode Island's Statehood Day. We'll provide more links and some information from that as well. But wanted you to come in and give folks a little preview. Again, this is Rhode Island's role in book ending, which is first into war, last in peace. Well, first, that's right. Uh, when we were leaders in that revolutionary movement, along with Virginia and uh, Massachusetts, and uh, at the end point, we were... Uh, like recalcitrant, but for good reasons. The Constitution countenanced slavery. The Quakers, who were abolitionists, were very influential by the late 1780s and denounced the Constitution for that purpose. We were pioneers in uh, what we might call democratic localism. We had a we elected our own governor, all the members of our General Assembly. Uh, so we were very uh, su uh, suspicious of removing government too far from the people, putting mm -hmm. it in a national capital, giving it to a national government that might invade states' rights. Uh, we were uh, also uh, very, very much uh, concerned uh, about uh, other matters. We, we like, for example, the method of ratifying should have been by a popular vote, a popular referendum. The founding fathers uh, said, we'll do it by ratifying convention. Well, now everywhere where a constitution is uh, implemented or changed, there's a popular referendum. So uh, Rhode Island, in a way, uh, you might say, uh, got its, uh, they came around to us. So <laughs> in some respects, uh, not why uh, the question would be not why it took uh, Rhode Island so long to join the union, but why it took the union so long to come around to Rhode Island's position. Fantastic. Well, you can hear more about this and more on May 29th. Dr. Conley, I appreciate your taking the time to come Kate, in to talk today. My pleasure, Kate. Don't go anywhere. Four o'clock will be Business Monday with Go Local CEO Josh Fenton. Appreciate your tuning in for the three o'clock show here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Good. Very good. Nagel. Good. Very good. Nagel. Good. Very good. Nagel. Good. Very good.